The new M4 MacBooks are here and they are incredible and one of the best upgrades Apple has ever made for multiple reasons. And a lot of people have been waiting to upgrade and Apple is really hoping that people do with these new machines. And honestly, right now is the right time to do so. Now, which model and which upgrades you should get, that's kind of tough because Apple has made it quite confusing with so many options. But do not worry, by the end of this video, you will know exactly which one you should get for your needs. And getting into that, let me start by going through 10 mistakes that you need to avoid when ordering a new M4 series MacBook. And by the way, we ordered a ton of these to make detailed hands-on comparisons, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on those sweet videos. And the first mistake is do not feel like you have to get an M4 Pro or an M4 Max. These new machines are incredibly fast thanks to Apple Silicon, so even the regular M4 chip can handle everything that most regular people People throw at it. There are so many people still using the M1 MacBooks and they're happy with them because they absolutely smoke the old Intel Macs while having way better battery life, almost no noise, and great longevity. The M4 chip in the base 1599 model actually outperforms the 16 inch M1 Max in CPU performance, which cost $3,500 just a few years ago while also being way more efficient. And yes, the M4 Pro does have more performance and there are reasons to get it that I'll cover, but the M4 is great for most regular people. For mistake number two, do not think that you need the M4 Pro MacBook Pro because of connectivity. Previously, the $1,600 14-inch MacBook Pro had a number of limitations, like losing one of the Thunderbolt ports on the right-hand side, which was limiting to me at times, and with that, it only supported one external display until Apple started allowing you to close down the display that's built in to get two. And for mistake number three, don't think that the only reason to get an M4 Pro MacBook Pro is for performance now that some features have been added back into the base level Macs. Now yes, you do get much more CPU and GPU power, but there are multiple other things you get when you spend more money. The first one is the fact that the base 14 inch MacBook Pro only comes with one fan compared to two on the M4 Pro. Now one is mostly fine, but it does mean if you push your system, it will actually run louder than the dual fan M4 Pro model, and you might get a little bit of performance throttle for very long tough tasks. Next, the M4 Pro and Max come with the new Thunderbolt 5, which has three times more bandwidth and faster speeds if you need them. So if you're planning to hook up to Thunderbolt 5 docks or Thunderbolt 5 SSDs when they come out, the M4 Pro model is a lot more powerful. But with that said, if you won't do that, you likely won't need it. And for number four, don't think that the SSDs on the M4 and the M4 Pro are the same since both are 512 gigabytes. So while both start there, the M4 Pro models have way faster SSDs, which not only make transferring faster, but it also helps with RAM swap on the SSDs. Now, the M4 Pro does come with 24 gigs of RAM, which is really nice compared to the 18 gigs it had last year. Mac OS will still use the SSDs when needed, and having faster ones helps with performance. And mistake number five, don't think that you need to upgrade your RAM with your M4 MacBook Pro. Apple finally upgraded the base level MacBooks from eight gigs up to 16. Previously, we saw major bottlenecks and slowdowns if you multitasked or pushed your system, especially as the chips kept getting faster. But now every MacBook comes with 16 gigabytes, which works for a lot of people. We've done a ton of RAM tests and will likely probably do some more, so subscribe. But after you go higher than 16 gigabytes on the M4 or 24 gigabytes on the M4 Pro, the performance increase is very minimal or not there at all, especially with the fast SSD swap that I talked about. So unless you like to keep multiple RAM intensive programs open at once with tons of web browsing tabs, 16 gigabyte is great if you have an M4 machine. For mistake number six, don't waste your money on a ton of SSD either. Even though we've been getting some incredible machines for the money now, Apple is still way overcharging for storage upgrades. Now, thankfully, we have at least 512 as the base, and if you like having internal local storage with a lot of it, then I would say it's okay to upgrade to one terabyte, but after that, you are way better off buying a small, fast, and cheap external SSD, like my favorite, the two terabyte Rocket Nano, for only 199 bucks, which is the same price as Apple is charging just to go from 512 to one terabyte. And I'll leave a link to that one down in the description below. 
And for number seven, I know I said the M4 chip is fast enough for most people, but don't think that the M4 Pro isn't that much faster. This year, the M4 Pro is probably the best bang for the buck year over year upgrade in terms of performance gains because it got more cores that are also way faster. Yes, it is faster in terms of CPU performance over the M4, but graphics is where it really shines with roughly double the graphics performance. So while most people are fine with the M4, if you're somebody who is really gonna push the graphics, you get way better bang for the buck with the M4 Pro. And now for number eight, we finally have to talk about the M4 Max and why you probably shouldn't buy it. This is where things get really expensive and even though I think most people watching this video don't need it, it doesn't mean that it's not an incredible machine. Just like the M4 Pro, the Max's biggest strength is its graphics performance. Last year, this was the biggest performance upgrade from the M3 lineup, but even though we still have the same amount of GPU cores this year, Apple managed to increase graphics performance by 25%, which is crazy. The single core performance is now over 4,000, which blows my mind. And multi-core is insane as well, especially for a laptop. The thing is, with the unbanned M4 Pro, it beats out the M3 Max in terms of CPU, and even beats out the M2 Ultra Mac Pro. And the graphics now beat the M1 Max, which has way more cores and costs so much more. So we're now in a reality where people that used to have to buy the most expensive MacBook no longer need to, especially paired with more efficient software. Now for number nine, if you do need the most powerful MacBook you could buy, don't make the mistake of getting a 14 inch. Now it might be tempting because of the nice compact size, but in the last few years, we have seen that the Mac ships are way slower in the 14 inch because of physics. The fans move way less air and Apple keeps pushing the chips harder. And I have no doubts that with with the performance increases we're seeing this year, the M4 Max models will not be any different. So if you are getting an M4 Max, make sure to get a 16 inch because we likely won't see that much of a performance gain in the M4 Max in a 14 inch size compared to the very powerful M4 Pro this year. And for number 10, do not sleep on the M4 Pro CPU and GPU upgrade. In previous years, I've always said, if you're buying a 14 inch, it's not not worth spending the extra money upgrading the chip. But this year, for the same 200 bucks, you now get two more CPU cores. And while that doesn't sound like a lot, both of them are performance cores compared to just one last year. And in terms of graphics, you get four more graphics cores, which makes it faster than the M1 Max. So if you're already spending $200, just for $200 more, it fully unlocks the M4 Pro chip into a beast and you get insane performance for the money. So if you're gonna get an M4 Pro for performance, I would highly recommend to upgrade that before doing any other upgrades. And with all those mistakes mentioned, who should buy the M4 MacBook Pro and which upgrades would I recommend? Honestly, if you're not pushing your computer really hard, even the base level M4 14 inch is incredible now that it has 16 gigs of RAM and it comes with that 512 SSD. Even if you do some photo editing, 4K video editing, it will be amazing and it will last you for years. Now, I think that most people should just get this one and maybe the only upgrade you should get is to a one terabyte SSD if you know you need a lot of storage. But after that, do not do anything else. You might as well get the M4 Pro. So who should get the M4 Pro? I would say people that know that they will be constantly pushing their laptop really hard and for those that know that they need a lot more graphics performance. I will say don't forget to upgrade to the 14 core version and likely that one terabyte of storage because you'll likely keep it longer and need that storage. This is just a banger of a MacBook and you can replace an M1 or M2 Max with this system, have it run cooler and quieter with better battery life for a lot less money than you spent before. And now who should buy the M4 Max? Honestly, this is for an even smaller group of people than before. And it's for somebody that wants a laptop computer that is faster than the best desktop Max that you can buy right now. And you know that you're gonna get a 16 inch size already because you will need that cooling for that chip. So if you're buying that machine, you probably didn't need to watch this video. You already knew that. And if you did need to watch this video because you're unsure, well, I would say you probably do not need the M4 Max. 
Max. Just get the M4 Pro if you are kind of on the fence. So thank you guys for watching. Once again, we have a ton of these machines coming out for hands-on tests and comparisons. Make sure you guys click that circle above to subscribe. You don't wanna miss those. Check out that performance video right over there. It's very interesting. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next video.